I just wanted to talk to y'all about the thing that Paradox revealed today, Life by You. It's a Sims clone. I shouldn't say clone, it's a competitor. It's a Sims competitor. Please excuse me if I look a little bit goblin-y. I literally just woke up and rushed to do this because I slept through it again. <laughs> I slept through it again, but I'm here now. I, I do have a lot of thoughts about it, both about the trailer specifically and about what other people were saying about it. I do think I have a unique perspective, both as someone who is a Paradox fan and from someone who came from playing The Sims when I was younger. I First of all, I do like it a lot. I think the art style is kind of cute. I like the direction they're going for. Obviously, it's like in, in you know, early development, but I'm really not worried about that. It does have like a distinct style of its own, like it's less bubbly and things like that. Also, I love, I post I posted about this, like I love how quick they were to show off the lesbians. <laughs> and, and the gay proposal here too is, is cute. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think it looks like it's a lot further along than I had originally anticipated to see it. Kind of reminds me of this one really weird game called PlayStation Home. <laughs> It was so weird. Like, it, it reminds me so much of it. Only in, like, the character models and, and how they interact with the world and stuff. I did some research. Rod Humble's been working with Paradox since 2019. He's also responsible for The Sims 2 and The Sims 3. It's just cool that they got him in the first place, and they're promoting that for a reason, too. Yeah, I mean, just beyond, like, the scuffed graphics of, like, a, a pre-release game. It's cool how far along it is. It's cool, like, the, the differences that they're trying to point out. Oh, you can control anyone at any time. You can directly control people, too, which which is interesting because in The Sims, it would be like you ask people to do things and sometimes they listen to you and sometimes they don't. It is also interesting that the, the very first thing they point out is open world. I know from, I've never played The Sims 4 because I just stopped after The Sims 3, but open world, I think this is like very directly because The Sims 4 is like a, a very closed off thing. You can only see like your, your immediate surroundings and you have loading screens between them and things like that. And I know people were very upset about it because The Sims 3 wasn't like that. Hey, you can go anywhere, you can see everyone doing their own things. I know that The Sims also did that though because the world felt empty if everyone was doing their own things at their own time. The thing about real conversations too is interesting to me. I don't know, it, it kind of takes away some of the charm of The Sims for me where you hear everyone talking in Simlish so like you can kind of just like assume what they're saying from their tone and stuff. It's probably like better in a lot of ways, it's just the style is different I suppose. Which is good, to be clear, it, it should be. And I guess if it means that Katy Perry can't do Simlish covers of her songs anymore and then <laughs> But it's probably a good thing. <laughs> the character creator looks pretty in depth. The lot creator looks nice. Yeah, and the color wheel. I know from watching other content creators like Lil Simsy that she always complains about the colors not matching perfectly. You know, if you have like blue sets, the blues don't really match each other sometimes or things like that. And I totally get it because you look at it and they and they don't. It's nice that you have like a color wheel that you can use to like independently pick the colors and make them match better. Especially for like wood furniture, I imagine. Like if you could have like a transparent wood texture and then just manually pick the color that would be pretty cool. Also I don't know if they show it here but they, they show swatches that you can actually use when you're building stuff. I love I love a good swatch. <laughs> anything it's a good swatch. Yeah you can even like make entire towns, you can export conversations, things like that. I can just only imagine the modding support that this game's gonna have. It's honestly really cool and exciting. I'm pretty interested to see how it'll go and how people will respond to it when it releases in September. It's nice that they gave us a release date and tangible details about this game. I was expecting maybe only a short teaser video or something like that. It is pretty neat that they have like this much ready. I will just say it too, I hope they do change some of the UI elements. Like they, they look kind of sad at the moment. <laughs> Not like bad, but just like very like sterile. I hope they do. They might not, but I, I hope they do. It's coming out on early access September 12th. I do also want to take the time to respond to how some other people are reacting to this too. I don't know if they're saying this sarcastically or not, but I saw some people saying, hope their DLC policy is better than EA's DLC policy. It might be. I don't know specifically how The Sims 4 is like or whatever. Just to be clear, you can very easily spend hundreds of dollars on Paradox Games too. You know, just, just putting that out there. This is a tweet thread that I pulled up from Fake Gamer Girl, why EA should be absolutely terrified of life by you, a thread. I mean, it's true in a lot of ways, it's just the wording of this sounds very like article headline -y. <laughs> Like, I, I love you to be clear, it's just funny. Thing is, since I haven't played The Sims 4 ever, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't know. A lot of other people can point out what's more different about it than, than I can. You can also switch to anyone at any time. I mean, I remember being dissuaded from ever trying The Sims 4 because of that specifically. I don't know if that was like the only reason why or if I just got bored of it eventually. Yeah, I mean, 
the character creator looks good. Personality features are really interesting to start the business, job title. It's just like very tangible and in depth. I don't know if I like it more than what I've seen from the Sims systems, but it is pretty cool to see just how detailed it is. You can time skip an entire decade if you wanted. I, nothing makes me more sad in the Sims than, than when your Sims like age. Not even when they die, just like when they get older. Like I, I don't think I don't want to do that, <laughs> but that's cool. Built-in object creator slash editor. That's pretty cool. Edit and adjust all the models if you want to too. I don't know how they're going to do that with, you know, actual 3D models that you can import. It's just cool to see how changeable all of that is. I love this screenshot. <laughs> it's like it's from 1960. That's great. That's basically it. I just wanted to go over it. Just like talk about it a bit. Genuinely excited for it. And let me know what y'all think in the comments below too. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the channel members too. Y'all are amazing. And thank you for watching. <laughs>